in today's video I'm gonna be talking about my first puppy and how I got him and what we've been doing to train him so far so this is Cusco he's an American Eskimo and Pomeranian mix we got him about two weeks ago he's I would say 10 to 12 pounds and he's super 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 cute we named him Cusco because of a city in Peru where my mom is from and we visited earlier this year and also because of the movie Emperor's New Groove ha! Boom, baby! I don't know if you guys have watched it but if you haven't it's a really really funny Disney movie about a llama boohoo now I feel really bad bad llama mm, okay you can go go baby go so I've always had dogs in the past, but they have never been mine, mine. It's always been a family dog that we've had. The dogs that I remember are my first puppy that I got when I was less than eight years old. His name was Bobby, and we had him until I was 10. Then we got a stray dog that our uncle brought for us um, back in Peru. His name was Neron and we had him for the longest. I think we had him for about six to seven years until he passed away. Having pets in Peru is extremely different than having pets here. In my neighborhood, nobody really walked their dogs. The dogs were just loose or they would be kept in the house all day long. A lot of people would also keep their dogs on the roofs to be like guard dogs of some sort. The concept of pet ownership when it comes to dogs and cats is not as relevant as it is here. I'm sure over there people love animals as well, it's just that the resources are not all the way there, so whatever little bit you have, you put it for towards your family, not really towards the dog. So there's no such a thing as walking on a leash, picking up after your dog, buying food especially for your pet, buying toys, training them to sit or listen. At least in my neighborhood I never ever ever heard of those type of concepts. But I've always loved dogs and I've always wanted to get my own dog so I can train him and buy him all the things that I always see online. We were kind of holding off on it because of the apartment where we are. We weren't sure if we're gonna be here long term, if we're gonna stay just for a couple more months. But finally once we came to the decision that we're probably gonna stay here for quite a while and then if we do move we are going to move to a place that's gonna accept pets, we decided to start searching for one. We went to a couple of shelters. Unfortunately, most of the pets there, although they were very cute, they were mainly very, very big dogs. Since it's gonna be mainly me who's gonna walk the dog and take care of him when my fiance is not here, we do need a dog that's not gonna be so strong that I'm not gonna be able to handle. And although I knew that we can probably train him, I just wanted to be very self-assured that I could handle the dog even before he was fully trained. So we went to a total of three different shelters around our area and most of the dogs there were pit bulls or some sort of mix of pit bulls. I'm assuming a lot of people have maybe problems with them once they get older, which is very sad. I just think that when people get dogs, they have to make the commitment that they're gonna take care of them for the rest of their lives. You can't just get a dog and once they're not a puppy anymore and they start having a little bit of behavioral issues, you just get rid of them. I just think that's very, very sad and very irresponsible. A couple of times we were kind of interested in some of the dogs that we saw at the shelter, but we ended up not really making that commitment yet. We had a lot of things to think about and we just ended up not getting any from the shelter. The way that we got Cusco was through a friend. A friend who had not really been looking for a pet ended up adopting one because she heard that one of her friend's family members couldn't take care of their dogs anymore. When we talked to her, she already had adopted this dog. His name is Hachi and he's nine months old. She ended up telling us that the same owners of her dog right now had one more dog that they couldn't take care of, who ended up being Cusco. Now, we didn't really get any pictures of him, but we did ask some questions. We told her right away that we were interested and if she could find out some stuff about his temperament and his behavior. So she talked to the owners and she got all the information that we needed regarding his barking, how he behaves around other people, around other dogs, and just some general information. Of course, we couldn't really get the full picture until we met him, but we just decided to adopt him with the information that she had given us. She told us that he did 
bark but that she thought it was mainly because he was around dogs all the time. At first I was a little bit worried about that because we do live in a small apartment and there's a lot of other apartments around us so we didn't want a dog that's going to be barking the entire time or maybe when we leave the apartment which is going to be for a majority of the day on weekdays. But even with that information we went and picked him up. At first he was definitely very scared. He didn't really want to come. He was trying to jump back into the house where he came from and he was just not very confident about himself he didn't bark at all he what he didn't want to look up in the car I think it was his first time in a car so he was definitely very very shy we stopped by our friend's house for a little bit and Cusco ended up meeting his brother Hachi Robert better not get in my face and I'll drop that much Cusco was very good, although very shy, even though Hachi kept trying to smell him and stuff. Cusco wasn't reacting at all. He was just trying to like kind of roll up into a little ball in a corner. And I think because there was a lot of people around him, he was definitely very scared. The next day he stayed in our kitchen area and he was actually very good. He didn't pee or poop. I think he knew that that was his area so he didn't want to mess it up. As soon as we came home, we walked him, he did his business, at least he peed. I don't think he pooped at all but then again I don't think he ate that day. He just probably was a little bit depressed, scared and all of the above so he didn't eat so therefore he didn't really poop. The next morning however he did poop and I was very happy because I was very scared that something Things not right if he doesn't poop but I think little by little he started getting more confident around us and he definitely barked up however even though we were told he barked we've only heard him bark once or twice I believe he's definitely still very scared of other people and strangers or anything that looks a little bit weird he's very distracted when it comes to walking around if there are cars that are passing by that are very loud he's gonna stop and look around Damn, Daniel! Damn, Daniel! So we kind of have to stop and wait for him to not be distracted anymore and then keep going. There's a specific British show that I really recommend if you just got your dog or if you're interested in training your dog a little bit better. It's called It's Me or the Dog. First, Victoria wants to refresh the away command. Away? Away! I just wanted Staines to, to know that he had to back away. And it deals mainly with dogs that have behavioral issues or that the owners think that the dog has behavioral issues. We're definitely learning a lot with that show, so I highly recommend it. If you just wanna like have it on the background as you cook or as you clean your house, it's gonna give you a lot of very, very, very useful information. Because I think this trainer, I don't remember her name, but she's really, really good at it. Like I really like how confident she is and how you really have to keep a routine going for your dog. Now Cusco is very well behaved I would say. I was actually expecting a lot worse just based on the fact that he hasn't been trained at all and that he hasn't had a lot of interaction with humans and only with doggies. But he's really good overall. He doesn't bark. He lets go of things when we ask him to. He kind of knows how to do some tricks now like he sits and he stands up and again he lets go of things. But the two major things that we're struggling with him is the walking. He pulls a lot on his leash or he just gets distracted very easily and doesn't listen as well. So we're trying really hard to work on that, but it's nothing major. It's not like he pulls to the point where we can control him. The second thing we're struggling with is the fact that we haven't been able to keep him in the house for that long without him destroying some stuff. Like on the first day, like I mentioned, we kept him in the kitchen area. There's not really much to chew on, but he did destroy his wee wee pad, which we bought for him so that he can pee in it if he needs to. Then we also bought him a crate so that he can sleep in there when it's time for bed. But we don't really want to keep him there for too long besides sleeping. So when we went to work last week, we left him up loose in the apartment. We did block the area that leads to the bedroom area so that he doesn't get in there because there's more things on the floor in that area and specifically underneath the bed. So I blocked it with a chair that we have around our computer. Now we also got a camera that's the furbo camera for doggies which allows you to see what he or she is doing in the house and also hear what he or she is doing. You get notifications and it tells you if he's barking, if he's coughing, if there's any noise while you're away at work. We noticed right away on the first day that he loves shoes. He chewed through my slippers that I have in the house 
I mean, not a big deal. They're very cheap slippers. I can buy another one. He also got a hold of some socks of mine. But after that day, we got him a couple more toys so that he can chew. We also got him this little vitamin that's for anxiety because we're not sure if he's just chewing because he's anxious there's nobody's in the house with him. Or it also could be that he's a young dog still and needs to chew on things for his teeth that are coming out. Now, this was on Tuesday. On Wednesday, he did a lot more damage. We kept watching him and he did it again where he grabbed a lot of shoes and he kind of gathered them in the middle of the living room and he started playing with them. What I had not noticed is that he got into the bedroom again and he grabbed more things from there. He also pooped in the bedroom, which I had not noticed. So the worst thing that he did is that he chewed through cables, specifically two cables. One for the lamp that we have in the living room that lights up the entire place as soon as we walk in. And the second thing was our internet cable. He chewed it so much that it broke the lamp cable into two pieces. And then the internet cable happens to be in a different area of the house. However, it's also behind the bookcase so the camera doesn't really see that space. So he chewed through it. So of course the internet went out, the Furbo camera does need internet in order for you to connect to it. So around 3 o'clock that afternoon when I kept checking for the camera, I just couldn't get any connection. So I didn't really know what was going on. It was really weird but I really thought that the app was having a glitch or something like that. But of course that's not a good behavior. If he chose to a cable that's plugged in, he could have gotten electrocuted. We do have cables going around pretty much everywhere we have cables for the lamp for the computer for the tv so we definitely do not want to encourage that kind of behavior we need to fix that as soon as possible so on thursday unfortunately we had to keep him in his crate just so that he can destroy any more stuff in the house and on Friday we had a apartment inspection so we did have to keep him in the crate but as soon as we would walk in we would get him out and then walk him we also walk him as soon as we wake up in the morning for about half an hour and then around 9 10 p.m. like before we go to bed so it's three walks during the day just because we know that he needs that exercise if he's been in the house for that long especially if he's been in the crate so on Saturday and Sunday we actually did something that we heard on YouTube videos about training your Dog, which is that when he's doing something that he shouldn't be doing you have to kind of show him that that's not a behavior that you're gonna accept since we have the furrow camera it's kind of easy to know when he's doing something that he shouldn't be doing so what we did is just like we pretended that we were leaving and as soon as we noticed that he was doing something he wasn't supposed to be doing we would walk in and get him on a timeout for about two to three minutes and then we would walk away again and do the same thing over and over again we did it about nine to ten times Times. Finally, towards the end, he stopped chewing on the shoes. I really hope this works. We probably have to do it a few more times so that he gets it through his head that he's not supposed to be doing that. However, this morning, I caught him chewing on the cable again under the desk, so I didn't notice right away. Again, I did that timeout thing for about two to three minutes, but it's really hard to know if he's getting it because, again, we've only had him for two weeks and we only did this kind of training for a day and a half. So I'm really hoping that he understands because I want to let him lose in the apartment the whole day. I just can't have him destroy everything. We are trying to get him all the things that he needs so that he's not bored and definitely have him have his walks on time every single day. So anyways, this has been the experience so far with Cusco. I'm loving having him in the apartment and in my life. I'm gonna have him have his shots on Thursday of this week, so in about four days. Finally, after that, I'm gonna take him to a dog park and just to do things out in public besides just having his like morning and afternoon walks. But he's a super, super cute boy. I really, really like his temperament. I really like how he is. I feel like we have a connection with him already and he's definitely a big part of the family. Anyways guys, this is the end of the video. If you guys are interested in the part two of this video, it's gonna be all about the things that we bought for him and all the things that have been very useful to us so far with his training and just with his behavior issues that we've been having with him. So I'll see you guys on my next video. Bye! Let's go. Oh, you're so happy.